Hi everyone, this video is about using the Onefinity CNC to machine a spoil board featuring dovetail clamping tracks. First, I'm going to go over a few design features as well as each machining operation, and then I'll show you the Onefinity cutting away. I modeled this board using Fusion 360. I've used the CAD software for 3D printing for a few years, and I'm quite familiar with it, though this is the first time I've tried to use the CAM functionality. So bear with me as I'm by no means an expert and still have plenty to learn. The finished spoil board is 31 inch square, which is about the largest size I can make that keeps all the tool paths inside the cutting area of the Onefinity CNC. It has dovetail slots every two and a half inches to be used as a track system for work holding. I designed 3D printed dovetail keys that fit in the slots and are sized to hold one quarter inch 20 threaded hardware for securing clamps. These projects together make a very inexpensive track system for the CNC machine. The price of the filament to print half a dozen clamps with necessary hardware and the piece of MDF came to a total of around $20. When the spoil board needs replacing, I can easily machine a new one for only a few dollars. The board also has a series of holes along the front and left sides that will fit one quarter inch dowel rods. These can be used if you need to align a piece of stock to the X and Y axes of the machine. Also shown here are locations for screws to fasten the spoil board to the work table. Uh, these need to be measured carefully to make sure they are away from any of the cutting tool paths. Okay, on to the cam setup. The stock is a piece of 3 quarter inch MDF that is rough cut to 31 and a half inches square. The first three operations all use the same tool. I'm using a 1 quarter inch 2 flute down cutting end mill. This one is actually a high-speed steel end mill I got on eBay because I'm just starting out and I don't want to ruin expensive tooling. The first operation is a 2D contour toolpath that cuts the outline of the board. It takes multiple passes of 0 0.08 inches each. It doesn't quite get the dimension to 31 inches as it is set to leave 5 thousandths of radial stock. The second operation then is a full depth finishing pass to cut the board to final dimension. I used the full 3 quarter inch cutting length of the end mill flutes. I'm not sure this is necessary with MDF material, but the edge did come out beautifully. The third operation is a 2D pocketing tool path that roughs out the slots using multiple passes of the 1 quarter inch end mill. This is the bulk of material removal for the slots. The next operation requires a tool change to a 1 8 inch end mill for boring the dowel holes. Uh, the one I'm using is a three flute carbide end mill that is upcutting to help clear chips from the holes. After that, the tool is again changed to perform a surfacing operation for the board. Uh, this is the one inch three flute surfacing bit from Whiteside Tools. The toolpath is a facing operation and uses a three quarter inch step over and takes a cutting depth of one thirty second of an inch. The final operation is making dovetail undercuts in the slots. Uh, the tool is actually a half inch dovetail bit that I got with a generic set of router bits years ago. Uh, I used a 2D contour tool path to follow the inside of the dovetail slots. Uh, this operation was difficult to program because of the undercut geometry. The tool can't be lowered or retracted once it's in the slot. The solution was to make sure all of the lead ins and lead outs were outside the boundaries of the stock. I learned a ton designing this project, and I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. If you want to make one, I'm happy to share the files for non-commercial use. I've only had the Onefinity for 24 hours, but I'm impressed with the quality of the machine, and I'm looking forward to many more projects. Uh, the rest of this video is the machine cutting out the spoil board. I apologize for video quality, as it was taken late at night with the terrible lighting in my garage, using nothing but an iPhone. The total machining time for the spoil board was 1 hour and 11 minutes, plus a few manual tool changes. I hope you enjoy. It. 